In today's episode, we visit the Grand Canyon. Malavi campground. We spent two days here. It's the only place on I-40 between Petrified Natural Forest and the Grand Canyon that has hookups. And it's a hot one, so we need electricity. But we're gonna meet up with Nick's little brother today and we're gonna go check out the Grand Canyon this week. Wherever I go, I will always know Everything I need is right here with me It's time to let it all go, no matter who knows Anything about me now I'm ready to see what life's got for me I got one thing left to say You guys know how much I love free And we just scored a free campsite in the middle of the Grand Canyon How about that? We, we came up here and from what we read, this place was supposed to be first come first serve. And when we showed up, we found out that it was something different. Apparently this year, they switched it for reservation only, but we got lucky. Somebody showed up and this camp spot was too small for them. We're nice and small, so we fit. We got it for free because they already paid the bill. It was only a $12 campsite anyways, but still, it's free, man. You got to celebrate. We like to celebrate free. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, did I mention Chris came to visit? Hey. <laughs> All the way out from Huntington Beach? Yeah. Dude, so. we made it to the Grand Canyon and it is spectacular. These are some of the grandest views I've ever seen in my life, hands down. Without a doubt. Is that a pun? Yes. Nice. Yes, I'm full of puns. How's the weather? I like dad puns. Oh, yeah, we're the, oh the, the weather is spectacular, dude. We're out here in 75 degree weather, maybe 72-ish. We'll probably get up to about 75 later today. We're just walking on sunshine, baby. <laughs> Life is good. Not only did we get a free campsite last night, and it's not very crowded, but we're some of the first people into the Grand Canyon. Seems to be a trend with us. We got that in Yosemite as well, didn't we? We did, and we don't ever plan it out, it just kind of happens. I'm telling you guys, there's magic to not planning. You just go by the seat of your pants and let the magic happen. You'll be impressed. This is one of those views that looks exactly like a painting in real life. And you can stare at it for 10 minutes and it's still hard to convince yourself that what you're really staring at is in the Grand Canyon and not painting. This is absolutely breathtaking. It's very nice. I'm happy to be here. I'm very thankful. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching and allowing us to be here. Your views help us go on this adventure, you know that? Every like, every subscribe that we get, every view from you guys keeps us going. I appreciate you. We appreciate his music too. You remember hearing his music at the beginning of the video? Yeah, that's this guy right here. That's me. Before you were waves of stair-stepped ledges, cliffs, and buttes, painted orca green and gray. Within moments, the colors deepen, then brighten as clouds drift past. You marvel at the slender shimmering ribbon of river that along with erosion carved through rock layers to create this natural wonder. Grand Canyon National Park encompasses a powerful and inspiring landscape that overwhelms the senses with its immense size and incomparable views. So the Grand Canyon Park covers over a million square acres 
and it received more than 6 million recreational visitors in 2017. It had the second highest count of all American national parks after the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. There once was a movie that I watched called Joe Dirt where I fell in love with the Grand Canyon <laughs> and it became a lifelong dream to make it here. And now we're here and it's amazing, amazing. And I am super stoked to be here. This is one of those places I feel like I have to stare at it for a very long time in order to feel like it's real because it looks like a painting. I mean, the water itself doesn't even, from this distance away, you can't even see the, move, the water moving. It's really hard to uh, grasp how grand this place is on camera. This is one of those places, you gotta see it for yourself. I mean, the camera just doesn't do it justice. It really doesn't. You gotta come here, check it out. This is this is my top five places to go visit in the U.S. 100%. You can check it out with a helicopter too. Life's a garden. Dig it. This is the grandest view in all the Grand Canyon. So much that they named it Grand View. Check it out. This is something special. It's also the busiest place we've been today. It's crowded here. I need to grow my mustache out so I can just curl my mustache and go, Tis a grand old canyon, yes. Hmm, see, hmm, yes. Mm. the lookout point from the visitor center in the Grand Canyon. They've got a whole bunch of viewing platforms. So I was wrong about the Grand View. <laughs> I think this one's better, way better. This is the best view we've seen all day. It's pretty special. Yeah, you protrude out over the canyon a little bit so you get a better view. We found this great free camping spot just outside of the Grand Canyon National Park in the Kaibab National Forest. I believe that's how you say it. Is that how you say it, Jacqueline? Kaibab? Oh, I don't know. Kaibab. All right. Uh, it's right off of Forest Road 328. It's completely free. We're nice and isolated out here. So we're just enjoying the weather. It's like 78 degrees right now. Perfect. And then tomorrow we're going to go explore more of the Grand Canyon. So follow along and find out what we see tomorrow. Later. Today we're going to go down to the Grand Canyon Village and check out a few things. I think they have a museum down there. There's a place called the Hoppy House and a, what is the, what was the hotel called? The Tavo Hotel or something? I haven't the slightest idea. I have to yet. correct that, I don't think that's right. They were all built in the early 1900s. We're going to check those out today for you guys. This celebrated historic hotel, located directly on the rim of the Grand Canyon, first opened its doors in 1905. The hotel was built to appeal to the taste of the elite from that era. It cost a quarter of a million to construct and was considered the most elegant hotel west of the Mississippi River. Today, it's still a full-service hotel with no two rooms alike and a full restaurant. Cool. Yummy. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, we're going to check out the Hoppy House. Yeah, that's a nice have a set of wings and just fly through all that you know. <laughs> gotta get a jetpack or something it's a short girl man. when the hoppy house first opened in 1905 it was an actual dwelling as well as a sales area some of the hoppy artisans lived on the second floor where they made items for sale in the evenings, they would sing traditional songs and perform traditional dances at 5 o'clock, which became a daily event that still continues today in the summer months. Burkamp's Visitor Center offers a short 
but informational walk within its walls. In fact, you walk right on top of it as you read historic facts beginning from 1870 when prospectors first explored the Grand Canyon until 2008 when the park purchased fur camps and opened a visitor center. If you build it, they will come. Apparently back in 1883, that's when they came up with it and the Field of Dreams was quoting them. <laughs> I hear a train coming, it's rolling round the bend. And I ain't seen sunshine since I don't know when. Grand Canyon. It's one mile deep. At the farthest point, it's 18 miles across. And at its closest point, it's four miles across. That's a Grand Canyon. <laughs> Dad jokes. Just outside of the Verkamp's Visitor Center, you will find the Trail of Time. You know you're in the right spot if you look down and see a trail of pennies embedded in the ground, with bronze time markers every few feet. This trail offers a unique visual and sensory way of learning the different types of rock that lay beneath your feet, and deep within the canyon itself. As you walk along the rim, there are many stones that tell a tale of time we can only attempt to comprehend. This rock here came from the bottom of the canyon is 1,840 million years old. That's an old rock. So this rock here, you see the squiggly line? That's caused by heat and pressure over millions of years as the rock cools and heats up. It just kind of creates this wild waves. Really neat. I love rocks. Canyon mules. You can take a tour on mules down to the bottom of the canyon. Um, interesting fact about a mule you actually can't breed a mule with a mule. It's a cross between a horse and a donkey. They are a sterile species. Today we hike the Grand Canyon. Just kidding, we're gonna take a short walk and then pretend we hiked it. So we're going to start descending down the Bright Angel Trail and see how far we get. If there is something we need, it's a leap of faith. A step away from the comfort zone and there's a little passageway through part of the canyon that's on the trail. See that trail right over there? I think we're headed that direction. And then Right over there, passageway Jeff was talking about. It's quite the trail. So the sign says, never attempt to hike from the rim to the river and back up all in one day. It can be a bit frightening. Hiking the Bright Some Angel Trail know. is a historic tradition. For centuries, humans have used this route for two reasons water and access. When prospectors arrived here in the late 1800s, they soon realized the canyon's wealth lie in tourism and improved the route. If you have the will and a moment to spare, it's a beautiful world out there. So this trail starts way up there. Down over here. All the way down over there. All the way down there. All the way through there. Back down. Over here. See, that's that's kind of really steep right there. And then it disappears because it gets even steeper. And then it reappears right here. And it goes all the way out to there. And I've been told that that's a hell of a hike. <laughs> And Ready, Jacqueline? You gonna do this? Oh, we're not doing it today. We're doing a short hike today. You're not? Maybe tomorrow. Oh, man. Maybe tomorrow. Although tomorrow's supposed to be warmer. And there's a 20 degree difference from the rim to the bottom. It gets 20 degrees hotter down there. So if it's 85 tomorrow, it's gonna be really hot down there. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. maybe not. <laughs> Makes you want to rent one of those mules. 
right? That way you don't have to do nothing. Yeah, your ass will hurt by morning at the end of the day. It'd be a lot better than everything else hurt. Poor mules. <laughs> they gotta do that all day long. <laughs> I think they just gave up. Or well, they did what we did. But, yeah. like, people that didn't give up, they're not sharing the road coming back up. They're taking no. up the whole thing. They're so exhausted. They're driving. <laughs> like, get out of my way, man. <laughs> I'm barely making it up. Oh, no, you can't get that. What's up, YouTube? <laughs> Out of all the animals out here, cougars, foxes, coyotes, rattlesnakes, the internet says the rock squirrel is the most dangerous. So we're only a mile, no, excuse me, we're only a quarter mile in and Jacqueline's already ready to be done. She's already chickening out. Me? Yeah, I told that's, her we should keep going, but she you. was like, she was like, wah, I'm that's too you. tired. But also, these miles, are way longer than the petrified forest miles, <laughs> by far. Those were like walks in the park. This is like actually hiking. I had to switch my shoes. So hotter though, doesn't it? Oh yeah. It's already a bit it's Significantly hotter already. This is the steep part? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I'll give you a up. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this the steep part? Let's see. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. We just came down all that and now we gotta go back up when we're done. And it's getting way steeper. <laughs> Hi, dude. How, how does it feel? Uh, it's tougher to come up for sure. Yeah? Absolutely. Okay, that's what I was afraid of. Much tougher. <laughs> they went all the way down to the Phantom Ranch. We did. And going down was no big deal, but the rest of it was fine. It was beautiful. I swam in the Colorado. It was great. But coming up that last three miles from the three mile point is brutal. You spent the night down there? Yeah. Was it super hot down there in the middle of the day? It was. The ranger said 130. Really? 130 yeah, degrees? You want to see what happened to my sneakers? My brand new Nikes. You can tell they were brand new before this trip. Yeah, they're pretty white yeah. still. And Look at what's oh, happening here. Man. Oh my goodness. And the glue just Look at came this. apart, huh? Oh. The glue gave out. Oh! Whoa! The other one is worse, this hat. Oh my goodness. Hey, you can't hike in that. No. I'm infuriated. It cost almost a hundred bucks. You know, I said to my wife, she goes, oh, you're gonna take two pairs of shoes. I said, you know what, with That's my smart. luck, something will happen. Yeah. Can you believe it? Oh, right side, you're almost back up. Oh, good. <laughs> that is good. We've hiked less than a mile, maybe less than half a mile, so you're almost there. Absolutely. Because look at this, it's very steep. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. and the, there are loose rocks. Backwards. Be careful, I saw a guy with a gashed knee because it's Oh just, no! Yeah, be very careful. Oh. Make sure, before you put weight on a foot, honestly, yeah, make sure that... Ground. Yeah, because yeah. I've seen people slipping and yeah. this poor guy. All right, well, best of luck yeah. to you, my friend. Thanks you too, sure. enjoy. The Grand Canyon National Park is bigger than the state of Rhode Island and it has many hidden caves throughout the whole canyon. Dinner. Dinner time. <laughs> what a nut. That's incredible. Here, so. <laughs> the over there because people are over here. <laughs> what a nut. <laughs> <laughs> You'd starve if that was the only yeah. way for you to eat. I'd just stand on the road with the people and they come <laughs> after me, I'd just headbutt them. <laughs> oh, that looks really sweet. This trail descends 4,500 feet in just 7.8 miles down to the Colorado River. Once there, it joins the river trail, which leads another 1.8 miles to the Phantom Ranch. The Bright Angel Trail is the Grand Canyon's most heavily used trail. That right there is where that billy goat was. It's a big horn sheep. I feel like that qualifies as a mountain goat. Normally, it's, it's really hard to capture how much how steep hills are on camera. Not Except hard. Except for when it's straight up and down. Sorry. That's pretty easy to wrap your head around on camera. Like it seems almost flat downhill, but then I'm seeing these people and I'm turning around. <laughs> so I think the Grand Canyon would be a lot more grand if they had an elevator. 
I, I disagree. Grand hotels have elevators. I wholeheartedly disagree. <laughs> I'm just joking. There's, there's a lot of the grandness of that, of this, that is experienced in the hardships. A grand experience. Yes. You have to completely let it whoop your ass and then you appreciate it. Most places like, whoop my ass. You're like, I thought Yosemite was bad. Everywhere Ooh. whoops my ass. <laughs> that's, that's about where we started, about where that person is. We've leisurely hiked down about 30 minutes, so that's a ton of elevation <laughs> that we've got to go back up because the Grand Canyon doesn't have a grand elevator. <laughs> We're almost down. We're halfway to the bottom, I don't know. <laughs> we made it this way. Part of, might as well go all the way, right? <laughs> Cactus in my foot or not, I'm going. <laughs> oh no. Is this gonna be a repeat of the blisters on uh the devil's post pile? I have the shoes you helped me pick out after that incident. Yeah. I have my own socks. <laughs> but you and Trixie kept bringing cactuses into the camber and I stepped on one. <laughs> From that bridge to there, it's just like they just roll down the side of that cliff. You see those people down there? Yeah, how'd they get there? That's the next switchback. <gasps> That's the lady with the kid I'm riding back. We gotta catch up. We're hard oh my that gosh. kid's power. They're moving. I just saw the mile and a half house down there. I said, hell no. <laughs> <It's when laughs> Absolutely you, not. Because <laughs> when do you not like hiking? <laughs> That's a long ways down, man. Scientists estimate this canyon to be between five and six million years old. And the Colorado River began to cut a channel through the layers of rock. Humans have inhabited this area of land since the last ice age. There's mosquitoes. Go, go, go. <laughs> Look at that. There was a sign up the top of this trail. There was a guy back in, I think it was the 1800s, that uh, bought a bunch of gold mine claims. Stakes. And mm -hmm. that way he could charge a toll uh, for the people coming down this trail. And he accomplished that. He worked really hard at it. He bought a lot of claims and, and he was charging people a dollar to go down through here. The government tried to step in and stop him a bunch of times and he fought bitterly to the very end and then eventually the National Park Service took the land from him. Still pretty hot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lady. Yeah I think we're gonna get a great sunset. If we ever make it to the top. We will. Make it to the top. <laughs> make it to the top. As we stand on the edge of the canyon gazing upon this view one is struck by the canyon's vastness. The mind struggles to comprehend it. Try to measure it in your mind, the canyon's depth, width, and length. Measurements like one mile deep, 18 miles wide, and 277 river miles long leave us scratching our heads. Perhaps the best we can do is just feel the canyon's enormity. We are minuscule in comparison, but still, through keen receptivity of our senses, we can appreciate the Grand Canyon's immensity. Smile, oh, you're on candy camera. So we were here, we tried to go here, we gave up about here. <laughs> oh, that that one we saw was oh. the three mile. So we were, so almost, we were there. almost there. dude. Because I walked out to this point oh and I could gosh. see that point. It was right there. That was oh, less man. than a quarter mile. Dang it. Trix, are you excited to go walk and see the sunset? Trixie found herself a rabbit over there somewhere. I can see it. She's very excited. She wants to chase it so bad, but she's being a very good girl. Aren't you, Trixie? She'll actually start shaking sometimes. If you, watch, if you look at her, you can see her shaking a little bit. She'll start shaking a lot with anticipation. Trixie, sit down. Shooting this amazing sunset. Check that out. Naturalist John Muir once stated In the supreme flaming glory of the sunset, the whole canyon is transfigured as if the life and light of centuries of sunshine stored up in the rocks 
was now being poured forth as from on a glorious fountain flooding both earth and sky. So it's currently 4.20 a.m. And uh, I'm gonna go watch the sunrise over the Grand Canyon. So the sun rises at 5.11 a.m. So we're gonna drive over to Mather Point and set up a time lapse on the tripod. See how it goes. Wish me luck. We made it out here. I'm walking out to Mather Point right now and I can already see the clouds are turning pink. Oh man, this is gonna be a good one. Jacqueline decided that she's actually gonna get up and join me. So that's awesome. But she's a little slow, so <laughs> I'm gonna get out there before she does. I don't wanna miss it. <laughs> oh, I love sunrises. They're the best. Check this out. No language can fully describe, no artist can paint the beauty, grandeur, immensity, and sublimity of the most wonderful production of nature's great architect. The Grand Canyon must be seen to be appreciated. I have to say, it's one of the best sunrises I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely incredible. What a view. What a view. Thank you for this day. Thank you. What do you think, Jacqueline? That's pretty cool. It's very early. <laughs> You're a trooper. It's nice to have your bed close so. by. <laughs> so you don't have to get up extra early. <laughs> And you are here with me. A house upon the hill. And a little like half open. Apple tree. The sun is shining through every window pane. It's bathing you in light. Why should I come? If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to see more content just like this. Later. I don't remember the story about the Billy Goat's Gruff. There was like three grows trying to cross the bridge and there was like a troll underneath. And he pops out in the first oldest, strongest one, tries to cross and he says something, something, and something, something says the goat back. and. I think that goat gets across, but I'm not sure. And the middle goat comes across, and it's some some, and the, it's a some some back. And the, the middle goat was like, I think he got to cross, he maybe not. And then the last, uh, maybe the last one gets to cross. I don't know. He's like a little one, and the troll and the little one like exchange stories, and then oh no, he eats the first two, and then the third one gets to go across because he's smart. <laughs> so what are you saying? I'm gonna get eaten by a goat if I go first? I'm the troll and you have to pay the toll across this bridge.